What's up y'all, Alvin here, and today I wanna to start a conversation. And when I say conversation, I mean a discussion that's gonna cover several videos because I got a lot to say about this subject. And that subject is fly fishing for bass. Let's roll that intro and get into it. I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so I've actually had people ask me, why should I fish for bass with my fly rod? <laughs> and the number one reason is because it's fun. There's a reason why black bass, both smallmouth and largemouth, are the number one game fish in America. They're fun to catch. I mean, the aggressive strikes, the jumps, they're a great game fish and they're also available. There's a lot more water that can hold either largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, spotted bass, than there is trout water. You can probably find some good bass water close to home. But I, I truly do believe that the fish that you have the most opportunities to fish for is probably the fish that you should fish for most often. <laughs> Just makes sense, right? You got more opportunities, you're gonna fish more. So where can you find bass? You can find bass everywhere. Down here in the south where we are, the old saying is, if a body of water doesn't dry up in the summer, it's got bass in it. And that really does hold true. There's a lot of urban bass fisheries, you know, small ponds, big lakes, rivers, streams. There's just so many different opportunities to get into some bass fishing. I really think you guys can do a little bit of research and probably find something really close to home, some body of water that you can pull some bass out of. Okay, so another reason you should fish for bass, especially if you can fish for bass close to home, is just the fact that you get a lot more practice. And the more you practice, the better you are. So there's several things about bass fishing that will make you a better fly fisherman in general. One is the fact that you have to make accurate casts. Bass usually orientate close to structure, so you need to make that cast right next to that log or right next to that rock. That's something that will pay off for any other type of fly fishing that you might do. Trout fishing, saltwater fishing, Accuracy is very important, and bass fishing will help you work on your accuracy. Another thing about bass fishing, which some people consider a negative, but I, I see as a positive, is the fact that the majority of the time, you're gonna be blind casting, which means you're gonna make a lot of casts over and over and over, hitting spots, hit the next spot, hit this spot, hit that spot, hit that log, hit that rock. The good thing about that is the more you cast, the better your cast gets. So you can go out and really hone your cast down. You can really work on throwing those tight loops and once again, work on hitting those spots, making those casts nice and accurate. And that is one of the big advantages of spending your time out bass fishing with the fly rod. Now, even though there is a lot of crossover from bass fishing to trout fishing, there are a few key differences. One thing is that we're usually using a little bit heavier tackle, a little bit larger flies. So that can be a little tougher for some people. Although you can catch plenty of bass and panfish on a five weight rod. A lot of times we're using six, seven, and eight weight rods. So that's a little bit different. Another thing is, is heavier leaders and larger flies. The heavier leaders are nice because you lose a lot less flies when you got 12 or 15 or 20 pound tippet on as opposed to like some, you know, two pound 6X tippet. Most of the time we get our flies back, which is, which is a nice thing. So that's one of the cool things about bass fishing. Another thing that it's different is the fact that we usually are not too concerned with delicate presentations, which for some people that is a bonus. <laughs> Just by the nature of the fishing that we do, a delicate presentation is not necessary. Most of the stuff that the bass are eating is, you know, a frog or a bait fish or, or a huge bug or something that's coming down with a splat on the water. So it's actually 
good a lot of times to have that fly just kind of slam into the water, wait a few seconds, and a lot of times that bass will eat it before you ever even move it. That's a little bit different from most of the trout fishing that you're gonna do, and most of the saltwater fishing. You know, the delicate presentation is definitely important for trout fishing and fairly important for a lot of saltwater fishing. Bass fishing, not so much. It's kind of nice. Another big difference between bass fishing and trout fishing specifically is the hook set. Now, a lot of people who bass fish and saltwater fish have heard this one over and over and over again, and that is don't trout set. Don't raise that rod tip to set the hook. That is how you set the hook when you're trout fishing. You're usually using a ladder line, a small, very sharp hook. So all you gotta do is raise that rod tip and get that line tight. When you're bass fishing, and a lot of times saltwater fishing, so that's why this is a good practice for saltwater fishing. When you're bass fishing, you really gotta uh, really set that hook with that, with that strip strike, which will give you a lot more power to get that big hook to penetrate that bass's jaw. So that's something that's different, that takes a lot of uh, trout fishermen a while to get used to, or actually a lot of conventional tackle fishermen also have issues with this because they're used to setting the hook with the rod as well. It's really hard not to jerk up on your rod tip when you see a bass come up and just explode on a topwater fly, but you'll catch a lot more of them if you keep that rod tip pointed down and just do that strip strike. And it's good practice for saltwater fishing because you're gonna wanna do a strip strike when you're saltwater fishing as well. So once again, bass fishing is gonna make you a better fisherman. Okay, so most people, when they think of bass fishing, they think of bass fishing in a lake, farm pond, stock tank, something like that, still water, which is the case a lot of the time, especially here in Texas. We've got tons and tons of great bass lakes everything from little stock tanks, one or two acres, up to like, you know, hundreds of thousands of acres in these big impoundments. But a lot of the fishing that we do in Central Texas is really a lot more like trout fishing. I mean, we're fishing everything from small creeks that we're wading uh, up to medium and large size rivers. So a, a lot of moving water bass fishing, which is really nice because that also helps you for trout fishing. If you fish, for bass, the way you would fish a stream for trout, you're gonna catch bass. Different types of bass, like different types of structure, they may not like the water quite as fast as the trout, but in most streams and rivers, there's some type of bass that lives in moving water, whether it's a spotted bass, whether it's a Guadalupe bass here in Central Texas or a smallmouth bass, those bass live in moving water. So you can fish them a lot like you would for trout. And that's another thing getting yourself dialed in, reading water, and it's just gonna make you a better fisherman. Okay, so you say, I prefer salt water over bass fishing, over freshwater fishing, over trout fishing, over whatever. Well, if you can't get to the salt and you can get to some bass, the bass fishing is just gonna make you a better saltwater fisherman. The thing is, you're gonna be doing a lot of casting, and it's not gonna be sight casting to a fish, but you are gonna be casting at a target. You're gonna be casting at that rock. You're gonna be casting at that log. So you get to work on your accuracy. Accuracy is very important in saltwater fishing. It's very important in bass fishing. Another thing that's similar that'll help you out is a lot of times we're fishing for bass with really similar tackle to most, at least inshore saltwater fishing. So we're talking six, seven, eight, maybe even nine weight rods. You know, you get used to casting that heavier rod for bass, then when you go bone fishing, red fishing, whatever, it's a breeze, you're used to it, it's easy. You've got plenty of practice, you can hit a target. So, once again, bass fishing is gonna make you a better saltwater fisherman. And like I said before, strip strike, it's the same, bass fishing, saltwater fishing, there's so many similarities. Fly Fishing for Bass, part two. Today, we're talking gear. Fly rods, reels, lines, leaders, tippet, and of course, flies. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with rods. Your rod's probably gonna be the single most expensive part of your outfit, so that's a good starting point. Around here, 
We use mostly six, seven, and eight weight rods for our bass fishing. There's a couple things to consider when you're buying your first bass rod. First is, what weight rods do you already own? If you're a trout fisherman and you're fishing with a five weight rod most of the time, if you want to get into bass fishing, a seven weight rod is a good choice. You want to skip a line size. So if you're fishing with a six weight, jump up to the eight weight. And like I said before, the seven and eight weight rods are going to be great inshore saltwater rods. Okay, so the second thing to consider when you're buying that first bass rod is where you plan on doing most of your bass fishing. If you're going to be fishing smaller waters, creeks, maybe ponds, and you're not going to have to throw a big fly, you might even think about going a little bit lighter. Say if you're a trout fisherman and you fish with a four weight, maybe that six weight would be a good choice for you. It would also be a great streamer rod for trout fishing and be great for throwing strike indicator nymph rigs if you're into that. <laughs> Now, if you're gonna be fishing bigger water, bigger rivers, lakes, and you need to throw some big bugs, I would say get at least a seven weight, preferably an eight weight. It's gonna make it a lot easier to throw those big bulky flies, especially if it's a windy day. And a lot of times on bigger water, you're gonna to have to make longer casts as well. So that's a reason why I'd probably choose the eight weight. So rod length. Most of your rods in seven weight and up are gonna be nine foot rods. There are some specialized bass rods in seven foot 11, eight foot, and while they do have some advantages, for me, I haven't ever really seen the need for the shorter rod. Sometimes it's lighter, sometimes it does help casting up underneath obstructions, but more often than not, it's a little bit difficult if you're trying to hold a lot of line in the air, especially with a big heavy fly and a weighted line. So I prefer the nine foot rods. All right, so what about reels? Now bass aren't known for making long, blistering runs, so it's not like you need a huge reel with a lot of backing. You just need something big enough to hold your line and maybe 100, 150 yards of backing. But that seven or eight weight outfit is also gonna be perfect for redfish, bonefish, a lot of other inshore saltwater fishing, so you might as well go ahead and have 150 to 200 yards of backing on it and you want it to be corrosion proof. Not only will it work well in the salt, it's just gonna last a lot longer in general. Most of your machined reels nowadays are gonna meet those qualifications. There are some cast reels out there now, some composite reels as well. Unless you're trying to save money, I'd steer clear of those. Another thing I would advise you to do is to go ahead and buy that spare spool for your reel. That way you can go ahead and put a sinking or a sink tip line on it, which we do use at certain times of year to catch bass when they're down a little bit deeper. And the reason you should buy it now instead of wait until later is reel manufacturers sometimes will discontinue a reel. And when you decide a couple years later that you want that extra spool, you can't find one. So you might as well go ahead and buy it when you buy your reel. All right, let's talk fly lines. Now the fly line may be the most confusing part of the whole setup. You got floating lines, sinking lines, sink tip lines, weight forward lines, double taper lines, level lines, and on and on and on. Not to mention what weight line do I put on a particular rod? Some people think of rods the way we think of reels. They're designed for maybe three different line sizes. And to a certain extent, that's true. But just to make it simple, when you first start out, just put the line size that the rod is rated for. So if you have an eight weight rod, put an eight weight line on it. For most of your bass fishing, a weight forward floating line is gonna get the job done. Bass tapers are nice. They do help a little bit in delivering larger flies, but seven and eight weight rods are gonna deliver larger flies pretty easily anyway. The second line you're gonna to wanna to have is some type of sinking line, whether a sink tip or a full sinking line. So here in Central Texas, we fish mostly rivers and they're not that deep. So we can get away with using anywhere from a 10 to a 20 foot sink tip and we can usually get it to the bottom if we want to. If you're fishing lakes, you may need to get deeper. You may wanna go with a full sinking line. If you're using a full sinking line, you're either gonna to wanna to be in a boat or have a stripping basket. Because that full sinking line, as you strip it in, it's gonna sink 
and if you're wade fishing it's going to sink and wrap around your feet and cause you all kinds of headaches so that being said keep it simple weight forward floating line to match your rod and some type of sinking or sink tip line all right so you got your rod you got your reel you got your line what comes next your leader fortunately for bass fishing purposes the leaders are pretty simple pretty basic if you buy tapered leaders you can get seven and a half foot leaders in eight to maybe 15 pound tests you can find them pretty easily a lot of people will just use a straight piece of heavy mono for a leader and that works fine most of the time as well i personally like to tie my own leaders so i have a collection of spools of tippet material from say 60 pounds down to maybe 15 pounds. And I'll usually do a three section leader, a butt section of 40 to 60 pound, then taper it down to maybe 30 pound for the next section and then 20 pound. And a lot of times I'll just tie my fly directly to the 20 pound. If I wanna feel kind of sporty, I may tie a piece of 15 or 20 pound tippet on the end, but that's pretty much it. And as far as tippets go, same thing. You can just use your eight to 15 pound tippet material if you're using tapered leaders or just use your spool of 15, 20, or maybe 12 pound tippet material to add to the end of your leaders. We keep it pretty simple when it comes to leaders for bass fishing. Okay, so the only thing left now is flies, right? I'm probably gonna end up doing a whole video just talking about my favorite bass flies. So we're just gonna keep it simple right now. I'm gonna break the flies up into two categories, top water and streamers. So top water flies would be something like a popper, a frog, a deer hair bug, and streamers are gonna be anything else. So woolly boogers, clouser minnows, that type of stuff. Now there are a million different patterns everybody's got their favorites but most of them will fall in one of those two categories flies that you fish along the surface and flies that you fish beneath the surface flies beneath the surface can be weighted they can be unweighted they can go to the bottom immediately they can suspend at a certain depth but basically what you're doing is trying to imitate something that the bass is going to want to eat Bass love frogs, bass love bait fish, bass love smaller bass. <laughs> so, like I said, there's a lot of really creative bass flies out there. Okay, so to tie it all together, I'll show you guys real quickly how I have one of my rods rigged up for bass. Okay, so here's my current favorite bass on the fly setup. It's an eight weight weight rod that rod is helios 3 d the distance version and then for the reel i've got my trusty nautilus nvg 89 so that's an 89 reel i've caught a lot of bass on this setup as well as quite a few redfish and bonefish like i said before it's an all-around great bass rig and inshore saltwater. Attached to that I have just that basic three-part hand tied leader 50 pound test tied to 35 pound test tied to 20 pound test. You probably cannot see that leader at all but uh, I bet you can see this and this is my uh, my current favorite actually been favorite for a while popper sometimes called the flip-flop popper some people call it the dito popper it's a really easy tie catches a lot of fish you may also notice i have it tied to the leader with the loop just gives it a little bit more action so yeah that's my basic setup catch all the bass i need to catch with this rig Woo! fly fishing for bass part three Today, we talk techniques. All right, so first up, casting. And like I said in video number one, casting is very important in fly fishing for bass, mostly accuracy. Bass are gonna be hiding near some type of structure, a rock, a log, undercut bank, whatever. Fly fishing for bass is really a game of inches. 
The closer you can get that fly to the structure, the more fish you're gonna catch. Pretty simple. You just gotta get it close. You can't be scared to lose a few flies because if you are, you're never gonna get it close enough. The thing is, luckily, most of the time we're using fairly heavy tippet, so most of the flies that you get snagged, you will be able to get back. Okay, so a couple of things about the actual cast itself. Most of the time, we're trying to deliver the tightest loop we possibly can. And still, that's the case when bass fishing most of the time. But occasionally, if you're trying to throw a big bulky or heavy fly, it's actually gonna be easier to open your loop up a little bit and just kind of flop that fly out. It's not pretty, but it'll get the job done. Another thing that's kind of tough with a big bulky bass fly is roll casting. They just don't roll cast very well. Now you do have to use the roll cast occasionally when you're fly fishing for bass, just to get the fly away from the boat or get the fly away from you so that you can make an actual back cast. But more often than not, you're gonna really wanna make a powerful back cast and really punch that fly out towards your target. Something that's gonna help you punch that fly out towards your target is using your thumb using that thumb on that forward cast to really put some pressure on that rod and really load that rod. Sometimes when fishing with lighter rods, you can use your index finger to kind of point where you want the fly to go. And that does help sometimes with accuracy, but with a rod in a six, seven, eight weight range, like we use a lot of times for bass fishing, that thumb is just gonna give you a lot more power and just as much accuracy for the most part. Speaking of fingers, not just the thumb, but this one's pretty important, and so is this one. The reason is, when you make that final presentation and you lay that line out on the water, you don't wanna just toss it out there and let go of your line. What happens when you make that cast and let go of your line, then you have to reach up and grab that line, and there's just a couple of seconds there where you don't have any control of it, the line is slack, and a lot of times the bass will smack that fly as soon as it hits the water. So, you wanna use two hands, and what you wanna do is when you make your final presentation, you're gonna let that line slip through your fingers and then as soon as that fly hits the water, boom, I pinch it and I pull all my slack out. If a bass hits it, as soon as it hits the water, I'm ready. Mostly ready anyway. <laughs> okay, so now you've made your cast. What happens next? A lot of things could happen. <laughs> You could just let the fly sit there until the rings dissipate. If you got a sinking fly, you could let that fly sink for a while. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we could get into, but right now we're just gonna keep it simple. So that fly hits the water, you're gonna drop your rod tip all the way down to the water, maybe even in the water. The reason being is you gotta keep all the slack out of the system. So you wanna pull on the line and you want your fly to move. If you keep the rod tip even a few inches above the water, what's happening is every time you pull on that line, the line is bouncing on the water, the rod tip is bending, and a lot less energy is getting transferred to the fly. So your fly's not swimming. Really important with poppers, because you really want them to pop, and they won't pop if you got too much slack in the system. So tips down, strip, 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 what kind of strip you're gonna do is really just gonna depend on what the fish want on that particular day. Some days you slam the fly down and start stripping immediately as fast as you can. The fish charge out and grab it. Other days you gotta let the fly sit, you gotta let the fly sink, maybe a couple of quick strips and a pause, maybe a lot of long, slow strips. It really just kind of depends on the day and that's something that's learned over time as you get more experience. We can get into that in a whole nother video. <laughs> so we're gonna start stripping that line, stripping that line, whatever cadence we're using, and then all of a sudden it stops. A lot of times it's a rock or a stick, but sometimes it's a fish. And if it's a top water fly, you'll know it's a fish because you'll see the explosion when the fish grabs it. So what do you do? What do you not do? Is <laughs> jerk that rod tip up. <laughs> it's a natural reaction for everybody when they see that fly disappear or when they feel that tug on the other end of the line to jerk up with that rod tip. And bass fishing, you really, really, really wanna try to do a strip strike. And the strip strike is basically just continue with the motion that you've been using to move the fly with maybe just a little bit more aggression ugh, to bury that hook. There's several reasons you do that. Number one is you get much more power 
to actually set the hook. The hook will penetrate the fish's mouth a lot better by a straight pull than it will when you jerk up. When you raise the rod tip, you've got to get the rod bent, you've got to get the line tight, there may be some stretch in the line. It's really hard to set the hook like this on a bass. But if you set that hook with that strip, you're a lot more likely to hook them. Now, the thing is, there's only one thing worse than doing a trout set, and that's doing a trout set halfway, then dropping your rod and trying to do a strip strike. Because once you raise your rod tip and drop it, you just created even more slack in the system. So if you raise the rod tip, just go for it. Do the Bassmasters World Championship hook set and see if you can get that line tight and see if you can get that hook to penetrate. It'll work sometimes. It's not the preferred technique, but it's better than introducing more slack. So just go for it. <laughs> All right, so now you got the bass on, he's jumping, going crazy. What do you do? Get him on the reel, right? No. <laughs> I mean, if you can get him on the reel without fumbling, without forgetting to do something else, sure. But more often than not, the fish that I see get lost or because somebody was too concerned about getting them on the reel. If you can, that's great. What's most important is keeping that line tight and keeping that bass out of the structure. When you hook a bass, he's gonna come out of the structure, grab your fly, and he's gonna immediately head back in. So the most important thing is keeping him out of there. Fortunately, we're usually fishing with heavier tippets, so you can put some pressure on them. We're fishing with a little bit heavier rod. You can put some pressure on them, and what you wanna do is get them out into some open water. Your chances of landing them are a lot better in open water than there are in a bunch of structure. All right, so you got them out, you're in the open water, everything's great, you're about to get them in the boat. Now, this is where it can go wrong once again. Small fish, yeah, no big deal. You can just hoist them up, grab the leader, or if they're really small, just hoist them up with your rod. With the bigger fish, a lot of times you'll see people lipping them, which works well if you know what you're doing, but even if you know what you're doing, there's a pretty good chance of losing fish right at the boat when you try to lip them. So bring a net. It just makes everything a lot easier. Even with the smaller fish, I tend to net them anyway. That way you can keep them in the net. If you're just gonna release them, you just take the hook out, you immediately drop them back in the water. Everything's good. If you do wanna get the fish in and take a photo, you're much more likely to have that happen if you net the fish, take the hook out, keep the fish in the water, get everything ready for your photo, bring the fish into the boat or pick the fish up out of the net if you're waiting. Now bass aren't as delicate as a trout, but you still wanna be careful when handling them. Get your hands wet, hold them gently, don't squeeze them, and please, please don't do the jaw jacking thing that all the Bass Buster guys did for years because you can break the fish's jaw. So I prefer to just hold them just like you would a trout one hand around their tail, one hand underneath their belly, and hold them up for the picture, get them back in the water, let them go. Now I know we've just kind of touched the surface of a lot of these subjects that I really want to get a little bit deeper into, but I didn't want the video to be an hour long. So if you guys have any questions, any requests for future videos, I'm gonna make some more. I already mentioned a couple of subjects I want to cover. Just leave me some comments down there. Once again, I thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. You can hit that little notification bell. And as always, good luck on the water.